Well, thanks for coming out to our channel. Today I want to look at various plans that show that the pyramids in Giza, the three main pyramids, and the wider set of pyramids in Egypt, present a unifying plan. Now here's why this is so important. So you look at these beauties from a distance, how majestic and marvelous they are. So standard Egyptological theory is that each pharaoh built his pyramid where he wanted it, the way he wanted it. But if there's a unified design showing there's a master plan, then that means each pharaoh really had much less to say about it. So let's look at the first template here, the first unified Giza plan we're going to look at. Okay, so uh, this is one that I'm doing with Bob Criley, the engineer. And we're basically showing, here's one thing we're showing, you take this cross section uh, of the Great Pyramid in red there, so you can see it's partial, partial, take it at th taken at that level, okay? That cross section, which we found very distinctly pointed out by markers on the Giza Plateau, just pointed out there, is exactly one quarter of the Pyramid of Khafre, again based on the top, so a, a, a one quarter of the base. And it's exactly the same size as the Pyramid of Menkara. Now a connection like that, again, we were led to this specific, uh, well, I'll do more about this later, that specific slice of the Great Pyramid and its relationship to the other two. That seems to be planned. This had to be planned ahead of time. There's no way each individual guy did this on his own and that happened. So there was a, that's an evidence of a master plan. All right, let's look at another one, my Orion correlation theory. Now, of course, I say my, it's Robert Pavals, but as far as I know, I'm the only person in the world that says that all the pyramids, or excuse me, all the stars in Orion, as you see here, have a corresponding place uh, in Egypt on the soil. Not all of them are pyramids, but I wrote a book about that, and there's no way that could happen if it wasn't a unified plan, okay? So again, the Orion correlation theory shows there's a unified plan. It's not a case of each individual pharaoh doing what he wants to do. All right, this here's the third master plan for Giza, Carl Munk. Now he's got three videos on YouTube that are unbelievable. And he, you know, they're hard to find. His books are out of print. But look up Carl Monk, and you want the yellow lines here, taking the uh, satellite pyramids of Khufu and the satellite pyramids of Menkara, and they come to a place which is actually along the line of the line of the crow, which, for, which points to where the fourth pyramid was. So there's an intersection there. But the yellow intersection he calls the Giza vector. And the, uh, both the GPS coordinates he gets there uh, relate to all these other stone monuments, Stonehenge, uh, Teotihuacan, Tiwanaka, all over the place. Unbelievable. you got to see. So what Carl Monk does would not be possible if there wasn't not only a master plan for Giza, but a master plan for all the monoliths, uh, the megaliths, excuse me, in the world. So that's the third one. Okay, here's the fourth one. Sacred Geometry Decoded is a wonderful channel. you got to follow that. So he says that the northwest corner of the Khafre Valley Temple is the zero point for the Giza Plateau. Again, there's a lot of these unified plans, and the fact that there could be so many unified plans, and they're each independent of each other, it means it's incredible logos at Giza. So Sacred Geometry Code, I'm pointing to where he says the zero point is. Like that, that's the northwest corner of the Khafre Valley Temple. Okay, so from the top view, you can see it's where the causeway comes into the Valley Temple. From that spot right there, there are all kinds of alignments he's fine. So it goes, uh, you, you, there's a, a line that goes through Menkara. There's one that goes through Kenkawes. 14 degrees later, there's, you know, there's one that goes through uh, Khafre. 14 degrees to the place where the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the equinox is. And uh, uh, then pointing to, to Khufu. 14 degrees between each, between each one of these, the places of the major equinoxes, and solstices are there. Unbelievable. A unified plan. Again, there's no way you could have put these pyramids exactly to, to match with, uh, with all that sacred geometry shows. Okay, a fifth unified plan. Again, independent of all these other ones. Okay, this, what I'm calling the AIP pyramid, because we're the ones that work with it, it seems like the most, it's five times the size of the Great Pyramid. Sacred Geometry Decoded pointed that out to me. It's five times. So here it is. You, you can see the top of it is this very center of Khafre. Uh, the, the bottom left there, the vertice, is the very center of Menkara. And then over near the wall of the crow is the third. And when you take that pyramid, it's 940 
uh, meters from from that red line there, and it's 186. 0.5 meters for the apothem of the Great Pyramid. So it, this on the ground at Giza, this Great Pyramid formed is five times the size of the Great Pyramid. And uh, that's unbelievable. That's a fifth unified plan for Giza. Okay, sixth, the Nazca blueprint for the Great Pyramid and for Giza. This is unbelievable. J.D. Jeffrey has YouTube videos out there about the Nazca lines. So you can see the 3D pyramid that he shows are formed by lines on the, on the plane there in Nazca. This is, if you, if you come up on Google Earth, the, the area there is where we're working with in that part of Peru. And so he finds this, uh, you know, 3D picture of the Great Pyramid there, including those white, you know, halos coming out of the top there. And then he also finds a 2D uh, blueprint for the Sphinx and the, the pyramids in Giza. So unbelievable, that is another unified plan. A seventh unified plan, the AIP Giza Circle. This is one, when I go to Giza in a few weeks, we're gonna be studying with my team. Uh, Will Wire is the talented artist that drew this, but you can see that circle there. It goes through the Great Pyramid, it goes through the Sphinx, it goes through Kenkawes, it goes and it touches on Khafre. And so, uh, Really, that puts the focus on the center because we know all those points I just told you about. Those are all famous points on the Giza Plateau. But what about that center? Maybe that's not so famous. That's what I'm going to be studying that in two weeks. But the fact that there's that circle exists, there's no way you could lay out all those things by chance. Just by chance, they would all touch base on that circle. That is an evidence of planning. That's the seventh example of a unified a set of circumstances in Giza. Now again, let me just remind you that this obliterates the Egyptological claim that these were each done by individual pharaohs. This slaps at the face at that. If you're an Egyptologist, what are you going to say to this? This is all just by chance, right? There's not a way in the world this is by chance. Um, so let's just look at the close-ups on, on the Giza Circle. So there's Ken Kawis, and you can see where it goes. There's, uh, and, and the two lines there, the blue and the, uh, uh, the orange, are, are two different places that you could take this. And they both touch base with all these. And there's different reasons why you choose them both. I'm not going to go into that now. Okay, an eighth example of unified plans. The many pi and phi uh, configurations that people have on the web about the Great Pyramid and Giza. It's not just the Great Pyramid. Okay, so, you know, phi plus one equals phi squared. Phi is the only number about which when you add one to it, it's its, it's a square. So that leads to the phi pyramid. If you have a half base of one, then uh, the hypotenuse is going to be phi, and the, uh, the, the, the straight up and down line there is going to be the root of phi. Okay, so the Great Pyramid is built very close to that relationship. And it's also built on a, 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 a secret of five palms and two digits per one cubit, which again makes it very nearly a pi. So the golden ratio is derived from phi. You know that uh, A plus B equals A plus B, and you know A, uh, B is to A as A is to A plus B. So that's the, that's the famous you know, golden ratio. Okay, so Gary Meisner shows that the three satellite pyramids in Giza follow that. You can see by the red lines there the phi proportion on the Giza Plateau. He also shows it for the, the pyramids at Menkara. You can see the phi ratio in them. Chris Tedder shows this. You can see that uh, when you take the center of the three pyramids, you have... Uh, a, a golden rectangle section like that. Again, how could that be by chance? It's a separate, I could, this could be number seven, eight, nine, but I'm just using these all as one. Jim Mruzik, he's got this cross in the middle, so it's basically, that's a golden section, the cross in each direction, based on putting Khafre in the middle. Another separate Giza plan. In part two, we'll look at five more unified plans in Giza. Not only challenging the Egyptological view that each pharaoh decided where his pyramid would go, but begging the question, which we will proceed to look at later, how did the unified plan come about? April 19th through 25th, join me on the Orion Correlation Tour. 
We're looking at the stars of the constellation Orion and where they land on the Egyptian soil. As far as I know, I'm the only person in the world who's written a book about all the stars of Orion and where they come on Egypt's soil. Robert Paval started the theory decades ago about how the three belt stars of Orion are associated with the three big pyramids in Giza, but I look at all the places on Egyptian soil where those stars land. So we're going to go to see the stars in the Fayum Oasis, camp out at night, stay in five-star hotels on the other nights. We're going to have good food, good fellowship, and an intimate time together. Please come on the Orion Correlation Tour with me, will you? April 19th through 25th.